Hello, welcome to the final video signpost for AST1000. In this module, we consider the regional futures of Asia and the Pacific. However, in considering the future, we must also consider and reflect on the past. This module allows us to stand back and take a region-wide examination of Asia and the Pacific. It also allows us to pause and reflect on all of the topics we have examined this semester. In considering regional futures, we need to think about the region, the diversity contained within it, the peoples, cultures, religions, as well as the diverse yet sometimes shared historical experiences it encompasses. We also need to reflect on the economic imperatives of the region and individual countries and the key issues and events that have been a part of contemporary regional relations. We should also reflect on the impact of globalisation on state relations and on individual states or groupings of states. In order to get a sense of direction in terms of regional futures in the Asia Pacific, we should begin by identifying some key factors in the region. Firstly, this region holds global significance. It is home to the world's most populous nation, the world's largest military, and it is home to two of the world's largest economies. This region is also home to a range of government styles with communist, authoritarian and democratic nations all cohabitating and coexisting within the region. If we think about the potential flashpoints in, in the region, we need to acknowledge that Taiwan remains a source of tension between the US and China. There is still a divided Korean peninsula with North Korea and South Korea still divided along the 38th parallel. And with US military bases still located in Japan, Japan is viewed as a military client state of the US, and this is concerning to some of its neighbours. Throughout the Pacific, internal political struggles remain a problem, with coup d'etats and local conflicts erupting from time to time. In addition, Pacific Island states are very concerned by rising sea levels, which are already threatening a number of islands, and the lack of action against climate change by rich and powerful states of the global north. However, in this module, we also need to identify and evaluate the key opportunities for Asian Pacific countries in the 21st century. This is a region of untapped potential and we are already seeing significant economic growth in the region against a backdrop of economic strife among many countries throughout the global north. It has been predicted that the 21st century will be the Asian century as Asian countries surpass the economic might of European countries. This prediction seems almost certain to come to fruition and should it eventuate, we will see a huge development in global democracy as more of the world's peoples become involved in international decision making. Finally, we should again consider just what an Asian Pacific identity really constitutes, particularly as the 21st century progresses. Is this regional identity still appropriate, if indeed it ever was? And what does this identity convey? I hope you've enjoyed your studies of this diverse and dynamic region and that you have a deeper knowledge of and engagement with the Asia-Pacific region as a result. Bye for now.